What's up, everybody? This is Welcome to the League. And I'm going to say this real quick before we introduce ourselves. If you guys like the content that we're putting out there, we want you to go and like and subscribe. YouTube, Instagram, wherever we're found on social media. And also go on um, Spotify Podcast. Look for WTTL. Follow us there as well. And with that being said, I am Ezra, and I got my dude. What's up, man? What's up? I'm Beanie. Beanie. All right, so Bean, we, we haven't recorded in a little while. We got a lot of things going on, but neither here nor there, NFL has not stopped. And this particular episode, we're going to be talking about um, the schedule and the schedule. all that other good stuff. But I got a question, man. So, what what's something that's happened so far? You know, nothing schedule related, but like what's been going on this off season that you like so far? I uh, like what the um, I like what the Texans did in the draft. Spending that two first rounds, oh, I think dude. that people are saying that's the most genius move they've done in a while. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, um, I think the Texans. I, I don't Texas- like how Jameson. Williams got suspended. <laughs> I'm hoping he appeal that. There, a like and a dislike. <laughs> All right. So on one of our last episodes, we had that conversation about James Williams and the whole, uh, the whole um, <laughs> gambling situation, uh, which we're gonna talk about that here in a second. Um, but yeah, the whole gambling situation and. Um, yeah, yeah, we talked about that, but neither here nor there, dude. So one of the things that I think, I think, like real quick, I think between the Texans breaking the draft by trading up, I think the Atlanta Falcons also broke the draft by drafting um, B. John Robinson at number eight. I'm like, dude, what the crap? I'm sorry, can we say crap? Yeah, My we bad. say crap. Lord, excuse me, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> you say crap. But no, but no, for real. It was like, man, seriously, y'all, y'all gonna draft this dude at number eight? You know, nobody expected that. I feel like that broke the whole first round. You know, and I it called, really did. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it even, it, I think it even um, caused uh, Will Levis to go to the second round. I, I really did. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, no. Yeah. I think we'll let us go into the second that. round regardless. I don't think that was effective. Regardless? Yeah, I think it was huh. regardless. Really? Uh-huh. I will say this, though. I will say this. The the Atlanta Falcons showed me that they really are going to be uh, relying on uh, Desmond Ritter. Season, yeah, and it's funny because like we've been talking oh, about how yeah. Atlanta and the Saints are like the front runners for the South now because of all the stuff Atlanta did in the in the off season, putting yeah. parts around Desmond Ritter and now drafting a running back to take pressure off of Tyler Algiers. Yeah, so I don't know though that that might would be more than taking pressure off. Um, but and yeah. then you also have to look at the the. I think Algiers has better hands than Robinson. And Cordell Patterson, though. You got to look at that, too. Yeah, I don't know like, what to do with Cordell that. Patterson was, is now a running back where, if I'm not mistaken, what was he, a uh, wide receiver before? Yeah. Um. Well, wide receiver, cornerback, and running back at one particular point. Um, was that season before last or last season? Um, you know, like I said, he's the Renaissance man on the team. Just remake him into whatever. Uh, will he I think, and I don't, and I don't think the BJ Robinson drafting the help hurts Cordell Patterson's value fantasy wise. They're still going to use him out of the backfield. They might put him back there with Robinson and use him as a receiver. I mean, yeah. he still got hands. Well, we're gonna, I don't think it hurts them. We're going to talk about them later because we we got a I got something I want to ask you so. You said something earlier about the whole <laughs> the whole gambling situation uh, with uh, Jameson Williams. So with that, we're going to talk about what we are going to talk about today. If everybody sees our background, they see the schedules from our respective teams that we love. And mine, of course, is the Rams. 
yours is the New Orleans Saints. Um, and you brought up the line. So one of the what's your, what's your favorite release video? Oh, what's your favorite release videos from all the teams so far, man? Um, at no, do we want to rank them or just random order? No particular it's, order. It's totally up to you. Totally up to you. Well, I guess it's a big order. I don't know. I liked Carolinas. Okay. I liked Cleveland's because I'm a big wrestling fan. So having Brownie beat up all their Cleveland's opponents was great. Cleveland went completely troll mode on that, and I admit the Browns might regret it, but they still had an easy schedule, so they might be pretty good. <laughs> got you, um, got you. The one that Tennessee put out with everybody in the bar where it's showing all the celebrities, it has Sheamus from WWE, Jelly Roll, and all these famous people in there showing the thing, which is really cool because like Tennessee's like my home away from home. I got family up there, my, my girl Jules. Yeah. What's and up, then my favorite one probably was the last one I watched, and it was the Detroit Lions playing Madden, beating their opponents. And not only are they beating their opponents, they are blowing their opponents out like forty to nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then they, they, how many suspended players do they have? <laughs> so what? So okay, okay so, Detroit. Detroit is still going to be a good team. Don't get me wrong. They, that's still going to be great. Right. But, so I like that you ended on on Detroit because I'm I'm not gonna go necessarily go in order, but this is like my second favorite. I guess I guess it's Disney. Kind okay, of now, order, what's yours? What's your five? So the the ones that I like were the Ravens, the Chargers, the Saints, the Titans. But it was their Twitter feed that I liked of the Titans versus their actual release. The Twitter feed had people out on the street. I think they were on Broadway, somewhere in uh, Nashville. And they just stopped random people and were asking them, who was this team? And it was the team that they're going to be playing. And when they, some lady looked at the Saints, she thought it was the St. Louis Rams. Got the <laughs> Saints part right. <laughs> she got the Saints part right. So when they showed the video... <laughs> And you know the Rams and the Saints play this year. I think the Rams and the Saints will probably play each other again another two years. Uh, yeah, they don't play each other yeah, this year. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Rams and the Saints play each other, but I think they play each other next year. Man. No, they play each other this year. They play, well, I don't in see. Sofa. In Sofa. Oh yeah, it's Sofa. Yeah, it's in Sofa. Yeah, yeah I know they play next yeah, year. It's too. a home game for us. Yeah, that's well, gonna LA? be a real interesting game. Yeah. Are you gonna try to go to LA? LA, man. Yeah, I I want to. I would love to go to LA, but um, but yeah, I know it's not gonna happen this year. It's coming though. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> one of my one of my uh, bucket lists is to go see SoFi. Um, but so That's I got Raiders, thing. Chargers, Saints, Titans, and then the last one is the Indianapolis Colts, and I like theirs. But I'm gonna tell you why I like the Chargers. One, I like the Chargers because it was anime. But then I just happened to see that the Lions were on the schedule for them to play. And they had this, this great big fireball lion up there just sitting stationary. And off to the side in the caption, it showed, do you have problems with gambling? If you do, call 1-800-whatever-the-number was. I oh watched, God. I didn't even realize that until uh, just now. And I watched that video. I was like, I watched wow. the Chargers video. <laughs> Bruh, when I saw that, it was like, seriously? Y'all doing it like that, Chargers? I got well, you. I, mean, I got you. Okay, on the subject of the Chargers, um, the very beginning where they show what looks like, like the Miami head coach vaping. <laughs> It was like a shot too because he was caught vaping on the sidelines. Yeah, so I was the Chargers say taking the shots. Was throwing a whole lot of smoke. They was they were throwing a whole lot of smoke, man. <laughs> but no, and not even that. I guess my honorable mention would be San Francisco. San Francisco, the 49ers did a uh, did a, it was basically like a rap battle with nobody else there. But the the lyrics, the guy that was I don't even know who the guy is. I don't follow hip hop like that. I, you know. I'm, Christian hip hop, but he didn't know there to do had flow and it was throwing the whole schedule down. 
of course, no dates were Ill- really in there, but um, neither here nor there. It was it was still a good good video, um, and the dude was a little throwing a little bit of smoke, especially when they started talking about Philly. Um, I was like, whoa, dude, okay, all right. That is one of the most hype rematches this year. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's yeah. talking about that. So, talking about games, what's your thoughts on? What's your thoughts on um on the Saints schedule? What? What's your thoughts on the Saints schedule? You know, looking Saints at the schedule? schedules in the in the, the games that everybody's anticipating to, to watch. You know, looking at the Saints schedule, what do you think about theirs, man? You know, I got some thoughts on the Rams schedule, but uh, <laughs> I think well, I'm gonna start off with this. The reason why I brought up the host talking about the Saints in Atlanta and everybody's talking about Saints in Atlanta this offseason is because Saints in Atlanta have the easiest strength of schedule. Win percentage, the rankings, they're number 31 to 32. Oh, but while looking at that, I can't get the I can't get the the, the there go. All right, while looking at this though, I mean it doesn't look bad, but then you got games like you got a bunch of rookie quarterbacks, which I guess works for the Saints benefit. I think, yeah. and we don't know, like, the first four weeks is Tennessee, Carolina, Green Bay, and Tampa Bay. And I sent you a message after the schedule, which at least, like, the Saints could be 4-0 and to start the season. Right. Because, I mean, Tennessee's got question marks. Carolina's got a rookie quarterback. Green Bay's got, we don't know what Jordan Love's going to do. And Tampa Bay is completely rebuild mode with King Baker Mayfield over there. And uh, John Wolf. John Wolford yeah. just got signed uh day before. And, like the Saints schedule really doesn't get too like look so I'll find a better picture of it. The Saints schedule really doesn't get too hard until it gets to the midway season where you got Jacksonville, you got Detroit, you got LA. I mean, you have Atlanta twice, which Atlanta's gonna be a tough opponent. I'm not gonna take any credit from Houston. I think Houston's gonna have a good year. Overall, even though they say that the experts versus win percentage say that the Saints have the easy schedule, which is true, I still say the Saints have a kind of hard schedule because you got a lot of these young teams in the schedule that you don't know how they're going to play. Yeah, I mean, we're not doing uh, pred- we're not doing predictions yet for the schedule, but overall, I'm pleased nah. with it. But I, I still think it's going to be a tough road, despite what the experts say. Yeah. Well, okay, so Saints, I'm glad they're in, in the position that they're in because I think they're competitors every season for the most part. But I look at the Rams schedule. We have ninth hardest, uh, the ninth hardest, which means that we're still in the upper echelon of schedules. Which that's um, a Because we got to play – of course, uh, I'm. Yeah, we could take it as, but we. I think we only got what, what like two primetime games. I think it's uh, a Monday night and a Thursday night. You only got two. I think Zen's got three. Yeah, I think. I think the, got two the Rams games. only got two. But we still play Eagles. We play Cowboys. We play the NFC East uh, this season. Um, That's we play. The Colts, and, and I'm gonna talk about that one later. But uh, we, we, of course, in our own division, we got the 49ers. We got to face CMC. We got to, uh, uh, we got to face. Uh, good man, goodness gracious! I mean, the, the schedule within itself, just off the personnel that we have, I think it's still a cool schedule, just off the, off the strength of however we end up this year. It's gonna make it better for next year. You know what I'm saying? For 2024. I'll put it like that. But I, I think I think they'll be good. I, I I'm looking forward to seeing what the Saints do. Now, as far as uh Logan, since Logan's not able to join us, um he he's doing good good son duty to, today. Um he'll be back on with us uh pretty soon. Logan's Cowboys and Jules Cowboys. They got a new offensive coordinator, right? Um, because Kellen Moore is in, yeah, with the Chargers now. 
Yeah, so they have new OC. They have new wide receiver in Brandon Cooks. They have um, no Zeke. They got Tony Pollard. They have more new running backs. Um, I mean, they have some new pieces. Just gonna, you know, looking forward to see see what they're what what they're gonna do. All right, so most anticipated primetime game. Most anticipated. You were talking about games that everybody was looking forward to early, and that was San Francisco and the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that one, man. Because yeah, I, I think that's. I'm and, all right. Sorry about that, but I'll just get the oh, good. Department. good man. Um, yeah, the had that face like like we have when our wires like pop around the corner. It's like, hey, uh, oh, baby, I'm recording. Back up, um, recording, girl. <laughs> the Eagles for an eyes matchup. All right, a lot of people said like, and not me, of course, because I I rolled with the Eagles to the end last year. I don't know who I'm around with this year yet. I hadn't decided, but I'm around with somebody besides the Saints. Yes. Um, and and but not the Broncos. No, not the Broncos. Broncos country. Right. They're <laughs> um, not gonna live that down. Not, they're not gonna live that down. I know. Somebody even use the 49ers, that. Forty Niners Eagles matchup will probably be one of the most watched games, just for the simple fact that the Forty Niners have gone. Does 49ers sound like the Saints when it comes to the Rams cheating? They're like, oh, well, <laughs> but if if we would have had our quarterback, we'd have beat the Eagles. But, 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 but we had a oh, quarterback. Man. I mean, okay. They have a legitimate excuse. No, nah, they ain't legit. <laughs> you can't play oh, football. I, th- I think, honestly, I think by the time that game rolls around, the Eagles are going to be so beat up for having the toughest schedule in the league. That the 49ers will probably beat them. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that the Eagles can still win the East because they are the best team in the East. And they're up to the, if anybody's up to working a hard schedule, it's the Eagles because they, they've gotten better. Somehow they managed to get better. They're just like the 49ers. They get better every year and they lose pieces constantly. <laughs> oh, I don't know how they do it. And they, but, they've been, but they've been doing pretty good. Drafting, they've been doing pretty good in free agency, especially exactly. like with with the the thought process last season or at the end of the season was that they were going to lose a lot of guys, and they actually ended up retaining some like the bulk of what yeah, they needed. When you play the schedule and, that the Eagles got to play. I think that what what week is that game against the Niners? Like middle of the season, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Um. Niners, Eagles. Ah, oh, that's Eagles Chiefs. That's gonna be a good one too. Yeah, it is gonna be a good. One. Eagles got like most of all the prime time slots this year, just about. Yeah, they do. They really do. I'm not sure when that game is. Um, but I know it's like mid season or late season, somewhere up there. Mid to late. Either way, man, I, I, I think everybody's going to be looking forward to that one. But I think the the game that I'm looking at is Eagles-Chiefs. Eagles-Chiefs and Dallas Eagles. Why the Eagles-Chiefs? It was an Eagles game. Well, I know why the Eagles-Chiefs. Why the Dallas Eagles? Just because they play each other hard? Yeah, just because they play each other hard. They just a the surgeons or the the, the build up of the units being as good as they were last season, and because Dallas is um, America's team, um, and because of the moves that Dallas has made, the things that Philly has done this, this all season, you know, and being able to keep a nice little group of co- of their core people, and then some of the draft, like I said earlier, some of the draft picks they made, and, you know, they got University of Georgia all on the defense. Um, but <laughs> just off the strength of of Dallas and the Eagles, like you said, how they play each other, it's kind of like when um 
the Rams play the Saints and how the Rams play Seattle. It's always, no matter how bad they are, it's always a good game. No matter how good they are, it's always a good game. You know, good game to watch. Now, as far as the Eagles Chiefs game, of course, you know, we want to see a Super Bowl rematch of any squad. Um, Super Bowl rematches are pretty good, except for when the Rams played the Bengals. But that wasn't, um, yeah, that was not good. But either way, um, I, I think that one. Now, with that, what's your most anticipated division to watch? Uh, this year, I think, again, it's going to be The AFC East. AFC East. What about on the NFC side? The NFC South. Yeah. Because, all right, the AFC East, and I'm sure we both agree on this, is it has the potential to be what the AFC West could have been a couple of years ago. Where everybody's like, oh, this team, this whole division can make the playoffs. And, I mean, it, it's, it could happen again. You got old man Rodgers in New York. Buffalo's yeah. Buffalo, Miami's Miami. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then Miami's is, been the Miami is the only question mark in that division. And they're not even a big yeah. question mark because they got Bill Belichick. Yeah, I was going to say, even with, even just because they still got Bill, that, that's, that puts them more of an asterisk versus a question mark. It's like, you know, it's not like it's really a whole lot of questions, but it's like, okay, what is he going to do with what? He has, but then again, it's Bill Belichick. He's used to not having, um, you know, even though you had Tom Brady, now you got to use your whole squad, you know. So, and he, he's still being competitive. My thing is, if you got to ask a question for the, for the Patriots, what are they going to do with, with their whole uh, quarterback room? That's, that's the question. That's there. the question mark with the Patriots. That's, that's the question. If we got to ask a question, what are you going to do? With the quarterbacks that you have in the room, you know, because we saw that carousel that they went through last year. Logically, you go with you either do. I mean, Bill Belichick is the man. There's a reason why he's such a good coach. And it's mm-hmm. probably because of Tom Brady mainly. Um, obviously, because he hasn't done much since he lost Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> but here's some shade on Bill Belichick, right quick. Oh man! But I think the best thing for New England to do, since they are that asterisk that I don't know what's going to happen this year with them, and that and otherwise great division, um, open quarterback competition. Yeah, it's going to have to be. You, now, you have to. I'm gonna back up for a second. I'm gonna back up for a second, and, and I ask this question: most anticipated divisions to watch. NFC South yeah. and the NFC North. And I just want to see what the North is going to do with the moves that Chicago's made, um, that Minnesota, you know, what they're doing, um, hmm. Green Bay, um, in Detroit. Just, just what, it, what, it, what are they doing? You know, because Detroit, Detroit, the Lions with their, with their suspensions, the the Bears with they're all in on fields and then like one of my favorite running backs taken in the draft was Roshan uh, Johnson because he was the backup to B. John Robinson at Texas but I, I was looking at his numbers and all this other stuff and I'm like dude I hope the Rams get that. but if I'm not mistaken he, he got picked up in the, was that the fourth round. He got picked oh up God, in the fourth yeah. round by Chicago. It might have been a little bit early. Than that. But either way, he ends up in a run, uh, a run heavy yeah. uh, environment yeah. where they're going to use multiple. They, multiple basically, bags. Chicago Bears is kind of like look, kind of like the Ravens. You know what I'm saying? I was going to say they like built it similar to the 49ers without the great defense. And I think that might because better. remember a few years back, that 49ers offense was a, a like number one rushing offense in the league because they had so many people to 
um, bringing contributing to the rush yards. And now with yeah. the Bears, you have Bills is going to run the ball. You have wide receivers that are fast that can run the ball or catch it. You have a running back room that you don't even know it is a headache. The running back room is a headache for fantasy football. Yeah, you got you got a plan for everybody in that room. Everybody yeah, like, in that, that room is a headache for fantasy football owners. You don't know what yeah. Chicago running back to have. Oh man, for for fantasy, most definitely. But I mean, but even with that though, just in in the reality of the NFL, the Chicago Bears, I think, is going to be the surprise team of that particular division. Um, I thought it was going to be last year, think, but it's going to be this year. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be this year because I don't think the, the not until the team figured out okay. New coaching staff, and let's figure out how to use Justin Fields. I think they started figuring it out right before he got in. Yeah. And because they have that to go off of, and then they have these new weapons that running back, you know, because the running back room again is, is new. It, it, I mean, you got what second year? But Herbert's the only one there, there that's wasn't there. The only one there that was last year. Everybody else has been changed. Yeah, yeah. So you got a new running back room. So, yeah, I think the North and then the other one is the South for me because the NFC South for me because of the changes again with Carolina, the changes with um, That's what I was gonna with say. Atlanta, the the changes at quarterbacks with <laughs> actually oh, at, with all of the with all the teams. No, you got new quarterbacks with every team. Oh, yeah. That's you what got, I was going to say. Got, like, all right. Yeah, you got new quarterbacks with every squad in, in the NFC South. And yeah. then you look at um, coaches. I mean, just the NFC South for me is, is going to be exciting to watch because it's not Tampa Bay. I think it's going to be fun. You know, I think it's going to be fun to watch, right? I, I think all that's right. what I was going to say. So, we agree on, again, again with all our, our division pick because, like, the North, because the North is going to be really com- probably the most competitive division in the NFC. Because the West is yeah. the West. The South will yeah. be competitive just because it'll be fun to watch. Because yeah. I think it's going to be – the South's probably going to be some of your most entertaining games this year. As far as – if you okay. like points, if you like yeah. crazy stuff, I think the NFC South is going to be where you're going to want to watch the games from. They're, it's gonna, I think it's going to be – it's going to be a highlight reel. It really is. So, of the teams, what's your most anticipated? Give me five teams if you can. Give me your most anticipated five teams to watch for this right. this fall coming up. Um, the Saints, obviously. Um, Tennessee, because right. you're gonna be watching to see when does Will Levis play. If he does play, is it okay. gonna? Be- is he gonna be good? Because of our question. When will they trade Malik Willis? <laughs> will they trade Malik Willis? Will Derek or Henry we're just, see? All kind of. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be one of the teams you gotta watch. Or or um, Tannehill because he's still there. Yeah, and then you have the Rams are gonna always a good team to watch. Cowboys are gonna be good to watch this year, and the only the other team that I really would think will be fun to watch is. Well, two, they're tied for number one. Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. I got you. They're tied for number one as, like, all those teams are going to be really fun to watch this season. In my opinion. And Houston so my, might be, I mean, Houston's going to be okay to watch, but I think those, the ones I named, the six that I named, they're going to be really good. You know what? And I, I didn't put Houston on my list. But I do think they'll be fun to watch, but I think they're going to be more fun to watch next season. Oh, they're going to be even better next season. Um, I think they're going to be more fun to watch next season. This season, though, I think if my five teams are, and I, I know you're going to be surprised on one of them because the quarterback doesn't make stars. Um, And this may be like more so I don't want to see him fail. <laughs> I want to see him Even succeed. though you don't believe that. Even though I know you don't believe it. I don't want to necessarily see him fail. But I'm I'm looking at the Jets. The Jets is one of my teams that I'm, I'm anticipating. One of the most anticipated teams for me to watch. One of the reasons why is, of course, Aaron Rodgers is there. 
But then you have it's like Green Bay light. You have Lazard there, and you, I mean it's like, dude. Okay, uh, you got Randall Cobb there. I mean, they basically took the like. What did you do with Green Bay with these New York. two dudes? You know what I'm saying? They got rid of Elijah Moore. You know, so the defense is coming on. But what is this offense going to look like? Then you got Detroit line. I'm I'm still on the line. Um, Jared Goff was like top four, top five quarterback last season. Um, and that's saying a lot for Jared Goff. Let you know that he's gotten comfortable in the system. But then now you got suspensions on offense and defense. You know, you got these suspensions. Minimum six games. Some of the guys are uh, you know, never you don't know when they're coming back. It's it's gonna be a year, it's gonna be how long. And then, so you got fifth. My next team, of course, is the Ravens. My dude, he got the bag. He got the bag, man. I knew you were in the got Zay Flowers in a the draft. Then he got OBJ. Yes, the Ravens, man. <laughs> Come on, Lamar got the money. He got the money. And I'm, I'm one of the, just going back to the beginning of the show. One of the reasons why I love their videos is because they kept it real simple and they put the face of the franchise in the video. You know, it wasn't anything crazy. Mark and Andrews? he was like, Rock Nation, let's go. Huh? You said they put the Say face again? of the franchise in there, Mark Andrews? You know what? <laughs> Mark Andrews, for real? <laughs> Mark Andrews? Um, I'm just picking. <laughs> but I'm just saying, then they went out and got people. They spent money for the money. first time in Lord knows you know, how long they actually spent money on offense. Yeah, I, and and I mean it's it's like, dude, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Ravens are gonna look like with these weapons. Um, and I know some of the guys are older that they got this type of deal, but I, I'm just looking forward to it. The, just off the strength of Lamar Jackson to Odell, is just listen to how that sounds. Jackson to Beckham, Lamar to OBJ. You know, it's, it's just it's, it's one of those things. Then I got to play the Dolphins twice. So that's OBJ against Jalen. I mean, just all of that stuff just with the Ravens within itself. And my other team is the Falcons. Falcons, we talked about that earlier. I'm looking forward to that. They get all their injured guys back. They get Pitts back. Um, you still got Drake London. You got uh, uh, Desmond Ritter. I mean, like, I'm looking forward to seeing what this team, and they're like the, the youngest, one of the, the youngest teams in a league. You know, I, the only thing that makes them older is Cordero Patterson. <laughs> but then, of course, behind me, on my, I'm looking for my Rams. My Rams, dude, I'm looking at them to do what they do just because. They have like the most rookies of any squad in the league. And I'm like, okay, what's y'all about to do with this? And I don't think they're going to tank. I don't think they're going to try to tank for high position on, uh, on a draft or in the draft next season. I don't, I don't think they're going to tank. And then I want to see if, if Matthew Stafford makes it through the season, if Stetson Bennett gets the opportunity to play. Yeah. You know, so yeah, those those are my five. I'm I'm looking forward to those five, man. Jets, Lions, Ravens, Rams, and Falcons. I'm I want to see what they're gonna do, and of course the Saints too. Yeah, Saints. Are, I'm gonna throw the Saints yeah. in there just because. <laughs> yeah. All right. So most That's outrageous. No, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, what are you gonna do most outrageous what? Most outrageous prediction. For the whole season? Before camp, look, before camp starts, before preseason starts, before the season starts, uh -oh. you can do most outrageous prediction Full as prediction, huh? your own squad and another, or just yours or another. So we're talking bold, bold, bold predictions. Two early bold predictions. Yes. Yeah. No, uh, no, nah, we talking about outrageous. This is going to be like straight stupid. It's going to be beyond bold. Huh? Like, it's going to be outrageous. Stupid. Through the roof. Yeah, this is beyond bold. We're we going stupid. Like outrageously stupid. <laughs> i tell you what. I'll give it to you when I get when we get back from the 
the break. <laughs> I'm gonna think on it for a second. All right, dude. Cool deal. We'll be right back, y'all. We'll be right back, y'all. What's up, everybody? This is Beanie. Um, I'm gonna take a brief moment to remind you to like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify, follow us on Anchor, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Anywhere you get your social media at, we're going to try, try to be there. And um, I thank y'all again for supporting us. And without no further ado, back to the show. All right, y'all, we back, we back, we back. Yeah. Okay, man. What's up? We left off with some real good stuff. We are going to talk about our most outrageous, most stupendous <laughs> predictions for this season. And welcome to the league fashion, WTPL fashion. Um, so here's how, how here's how it's gonna work, man. Most outrageous prediction wins loss to make the playoffs. Um, most outrageous prediction MVP and we're going to stick with those three wins and losses playoffs rookies or should, should I say MVP and then rookies who you think so you want to start or you want me to start what are we starting with we starting with <laughs> Wins losses. Let me start. I want to start. All right. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna. I'm staying with my home team. Most outrageous for this season is gonna be my Rams will make it to the wild card on the backs of a few veterans and rookies. Okay. And hear me out. I know this is this is this is. This is this is outrageous for real. And the reason why I say it is is because, one, again, I said it earlier, I don't think they're going to tank for for draft placement. I don't think they're going to play tank for draft placement because, you know, the Rams, they'll trade up or down with whatever picks they have. They do it every year. Other reason why I think they will is because the rookies that they have, as much as some of them are unheralded, Undrafted free agents. How many times have we seen undrafted free agents come through and be studs? And they got what, like twenty something? Wow, they got fourteen rookies, and they got like twenty. I think it was like twenty four or twenty six undrafted free agents, plus the guys that's already on the roster. It's gonna be a bunch of hungry dudes. A bunch of hungry dudes. One, in training camps preseason. Two, trying to make sure they stay on the squad once the season starts. Just to say, hey, I can take you down. How many young bucks have you seen try to go against the old head? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To say, look, man, take me seriously. I think that these dudes are going to literally try to come through and do the outrageous, for real. They're going to try to do the outrageous. And it just seems like a Rams thing to do. And I'm not saying that as, as, a, as a fan, but just looking at Les Mead and, and Sean McVay and um, the, the Rams ownership, just how they've been running things since 2017, it just seems like something that would happen with, you know, yeah. you flicking your hair. <laughs> no, I just... All right, so that's my that's my that's my outrageous one that the Rams will have <laughs> have a better season than anybody anticipates and will make the oh, wild card. I got you better than that. Now, it, realistically, I think they'll probably they'll probably be seven and ten, you know, at the most as far as no, man, I think the they more games they want. Make that your prediction. Don't go back. Yeah, no, I'm just saying what you're thinking. But no, no, I ain't questioning it. Trust me, I'm I'm rolling with the outrageous for real. Like I'm about so, to, what with my Saints prediction, I'm gonna stick with my guns and I'm riding it to the end. I don't care what anybody says the rest of the season. Yeah, I'm I'm rolling with that. My Saints prediction: Saints to go eleven and six. Ooh, 
Number one in the South, losing the divisional round. Losing the divisional round to probably the eventual Super Bowl champion, whoever it may be. I'm thinking it might actually be the Eagles again. <laughs> So you stand eleven and six. Eleven and six and losing the division round to the eventual Super Bowl representative from the NFC. And so you're saying I'm predicting a huge so possibility here. So you're saying they're gonna make it to the NFC championship. No, I'm making they're gonna make it to the divisional round. Okay. They're gonna um, make it to the divisional and round. Whoever beats in the division gotcha. round is probably gonna go to the NFC championship, maybe to the Super Bowl. Okay. I'm just going out completely out of this world, like to Neptune so, prediction. I got so, one more for the so Saints. Saints win the division, yes. win the division, make it to the divisional round, not be a wild card because of the strength of schedule being second to the weakest. So that part's not necessarily too outrageous, but the whole part of them making it to the divisional round says that. That's, and you're saying that they're not, not going to be a wild card. They're going to be like straight, like divisional. They might have to play in a wild card round because I don't. They're not going to get a buy, so they're going to play in a wild card round. But I think they win the division. All right, all right. And all right. to add to that, because we're going to Neptune, Derek Carr throws for 4,500 yards this season. So okay, so your outrageous. The picture on MVP is going to be Derek Carr be the MVP because that's saying a lot, 4,500. No, nah, I don't think he's going to win MVP because Patrick Mahomes is going to throw for five. Oh, no, Patrick Mahomes not winning MVP. He's going to throw for 5,000. I think Derek Carr is going to throw for a good 4,500 yards. <sighs> this is outrageous. So this this, this got to be outrageous. It can't be logical. All right, yeah, this so is, logically speaking, this is, Logically, oh, logically he's probably going to throw 4,000. Mahomes should, should, should get MVP. So we're moving to MVP. So, so records MVP. right now, I'm saying Rams make it to the wild card. And I'm going to roll with that. I'm going to hold on to that. Y'all y'all be able to pull that up. I'm saying Rams make it to the wild card. That's my outrageous prediction for this season. My next one, we're going to roll with MVP. Who? Do you believe, outrageously speaking, is going to be MVP of the league this year? This year? Yeah. Outrageously, like completely off the wall. Outrageously, like totally come out of nowhere and win MVP. Joe Burrow. I'm sorry, my whole face did just change, didn't it? <laughs> Joe Burrow wins MVP this year. Joe not Josh Burrow. Allen, not Patrick Mahomes, not Jalen Hurts, not Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow. Hmm. Who's your MVP? Outrageous. Dang. Wow. Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. So I call him Bayou Joe. So since you got Bayou, Bayou Joe winning MVP. I'm going to go. Ah, everybody expects Aaron Rodgers. I caught you by surprise win. by looking at your face. Everybody expects Aaron Rodgers to win. You expect Aaron Rodgers to win MVP. You expect him to. That's not outrageous. Yeah. I mean, because he's, he is who he is. MVP for me this year. Oh, man. I think MVP this year. I'm going to still roll with a quarterback. I'm going to yeah. give him his flowers. I got no. two guys. I can only do one. Who are you going to do? All right. I would like to go outrageously with Jerry Goff, but I just don't see it. Even outrageously. I don't that's see a little too outrageous. Yeah, that's way, that's way beyond. That's way beyond. That's, yeah, that's what way beyond because they have too many suspensions. <laughs> but I'm going to roll with I'm going to roll with Lamar Jackson. I'm going with Lamar Jackson being MVP. That's a pretty good uh, a pretty good choice, I think. I saw Joe Burrow. I, I think, think that's the other one. 
I, and I'm going to say why it's outrageous. It's outrageous because everything around him is new. His, his offensive weapons are new. You know, he's got to learn everybody. So some people will be like, well, that's not outrageous. He could do it on, on just running alone. No, he's not going to be able to do it off running alone. He's going to have to use his weapons. If he is supposed to be the quarterback that he believes he is, that Baltimore thinks he is, he's going to have to be well-balanced on his attacks. And I, I think he's proven that he can be these past few seasons. Then he has to stay healthy. So with that, I'm just saying, Lamar Jackson, uh, I'm rooting for him to be the MVP of the league this year. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna roll I with like Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Jackson. I like the. Uh, I think that's a good one. Be a good. Yeah, a good Joe, Joe Burrow. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, the AFC is like real. AFC is real, real tight with guys that you got to go against. Um, I'm surprised you didn't say Justin Herbert, but uh, because <laughs> he gets Keenan Allen back, he gets Williams back, he got um. Well, right for right now, he still got Austin Eckler. Um, Everett actually did pretty good last year. Um, I mean, you got good stuff going on that that direction. So now, rookie of the year. This is gonna be our last one. Rookie of the year. So you know we got uh, Smith and Jingles. We got Zay Flowers. We got um, Bijan Robinson. We have. All these cats. Who do you think rookie of the year is going to end up? Well, here we go. Um, I got, I got two for rookies. Two Hold on outrageous for predictions. <laughs> Pause the video. We will come back to this. I got two. Okay, two different things. So, say what? So we were talking about rookies. I got two different things for rookies. All right. All right. So so now we're on rookies again. We're on rookies. We, we were talking about in Jiggly, we, um, Smith and Jiggly. We were talking about Zay Flowers. We got, you know, all these guys. Who do you think, outrageously speaking, is going to be rookie of the year? Well, I'll get that in a second. I got two things I want to do prediction wise. Rookie of the year is probably going to be defensive again. Okay. I think because a lot of the weapons that we're taking. Well, I mean, you got offensive rookie, you got defensive rookie. So who's your defensive rookie? Defensive rookie is easy as um, Jalen Carter. So who other than Jalen Carter, though? Is do you think can be? I don't know if he wins the MVP, but I think he's a, he's going to be he's going to make his presence known, and that is Riley Moss, cornerback. Okay, but I think yeah. even you looking at what Joy Porter Jr. You would think Joy Porter Jr. is what, a good would one be, too. I, yeah, yeah. Now, what, what, as far as offensive rookie, who are you thinking? Outrageously speaking. Outrageously speaking. Well, my outrageous comes from what I'm going to say before I say who I think the offensive rookie is going to be. My outrageous is I think Quentin Johnston hits 1,000 yards between before any other rookie wide receiver. Really? Yes. That is that, – that is uh, – yeah, that is, I don't uh, think he ends up being the best rookie this year, but I think he ends up hitting wide receiver wise. He ends up hitting the thousand dollar mark for any other rookie wide receiver. Okay, so just because of his situation, he, because Keenan Allen and um, Mike Williams can't stay healthy. Okay, and then my oh. offensive rookie of the year, too early bowl prediction. Uh, I hate to be obvious, but I'm gonna be obvious anyway. It's not really bold, but it is bold because I think he's gonna be great. 
I think it's going to be Bijan Robinson. You know what? I'm going to go outrageously against that particular thought process. I think that his backup, Roshan Johnson, is going to outplay him this season. Wow. So that's your prediction for player that's my That's my that's my outrageous. And as far as and, – and this is – I think he's going to have a better rookie season than B. John. Outrageously speaking. Just because I think he has the capability to do just as much as I think that he doesn't have the wear and tear outside of the broken hand situation that he had during, I think, Senior Bowl. Um, Because, you know, they can wrap that up. (laughs) Um, I think he ends up coming in and getting the, the RB2 grade in Chicago. So he's in a good situation. He can go out and actually outplay uh, Khalil um, and um, what's my dude that just went went from Carolina? Dante Foreman to Chicago, excuse me. Yeah, so I think I think that Roshan John is is going to be one of those guys that ends up being offensively good as you, just because. Nobody expects him to, to come in and, and have to do anything, but the talent is there. Um, he can be offensive rookie, offensive rookie of the year. And who else? There's one other person. And I'm going to go with Zach Evans with the Rams. Just because he was picked as low as he was picked. He's out of Ole Miss. He played at TCU and at Ole Miss. And he played at a high level. And Nobody's expecting him to do um, do what he's doing. And I'm going to go with Mr. Irrelevant. <laughs> Mr. Irrelevant. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he is defensive tackle. I think he's defensive tackle. Um, it's Juan Johnson that the Rams picked up. Yeah. That's your defense? Yeah, that's my defensive person. And I know I went Rams, but hey, I'm going out racing. And I did say that the Rams are gonna make make the playoffs off of rookies. <laughs> so dude, look, wow. I know it's it's few and far in between some of our episodes. I know we got some pretty good shorts out there. Um, because we try not to keep it long, but we try to stay, you know, in with everybody. We like greatly appreciate every single last person that has followed us. Um, we picked up some new subscriptions. Appreciate you guys. Um, I see the counts going up. It, it, it's going up gradually. We appreciate you. Um, so I'm looking forward to this 2023 season, man, just because it's football, you know, and all of the rookie situations that we got going this year are crazy. You know, it's going to be crazy. And you know what? We didn't even mention any of the tight ends. We we didn't mention the port. We didn't mention, mention uh, Washington or Mayor or King K or <laughs> King K. I'm sorry. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't mention any of these guys, but that would have been the outrageous one that a tight end be yeah. the offensive rookie of the year. And I think Dalton King K actually has the ability to do that in Buffalo. That would be nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has the ability to do that in Buffalo, man. That would be nuts, man. Nuts. All right. So, um, real quick, tell your wife congratulations on the on the graduation and happy anniversary. Cause what was that last week? Yes. Yeah, happy anniversary, you and your wife, man. Um, and if nothing else, welcome to the league. Thank you.